Touchdown confirmed. We're safe on Mars. Unearthed from the depths of secrecy, the recently revealed Russian images from their Venus missions are bone chilling. These aren't just your everyday space photos. They are gateways to deep, dark secrets that have been kept hidden for too long. Imagine having an entire universe of mysteries right before our eyes, only to have them shrouded in silence. The whispers around these images are growing louder, hinting at things beyond our wildest imagination. Terrifying? Absolutely. Exciting? You bet. Prepare yourself. Once you dive in the hidden agendas, there's no turning back. The universe's secrets are waiting. Are you brave enough? Long ago, humans could only dream of touching the stars, but guess what? We turned those dreams into reality. The story of space exploration is super exciting and filled with daring adventures. In the 1950s, the space race began. Two countries, the USA and the USSR, now Russia, started this thrilling competition. Who could get to space first? In 1957, the USSR took the lead by sending the first satellite, Sputnik, into space. People around the world listened in awe to its beeping sounds from the sky. The USA didn't stay behind for long. Soon they sent astronauts to the moon. Imagine that, walking on the moon and looking back at our tiny Earth. Now, here's a cool twist. Space wasn't just for the big players. Countries like China, India and many in Europe began exploring space too. Each had its unique missions and discoveries. With all these space exploration projects being hailed by the individual countries, there is one that stands tall amongst all else, the story of the Venus missions. A thrilling attempt at unravelling the Venusian puzzle, the Venus missions became a testament to human ingenuity and determination. Picture it. It's February 4th, 1961. The world's superpowers are engaged in a space race. While NASA diverts its attention to Mars and other celestial bodies, Russia has its eyes set firmly on Venus. Their first bet? A probe named Sputnik. Most have never heard of it, as it didn't even escape Earth's orbit. The Soviet Union, in its secretive demeanor, usually never disclosed such failures. For many, this mission would have faded into oblivion. But it seems that every failure has a lesson. Hidden in the shadows of Sputnik's failure was a clue. The weight and design of the Sputnik might have been its downfall. Yet, from its remnants rose a new hope. Venera 1. Think about it. Only eight days after the heartbreak, the Soviets are back with a probe that's seven times heavier than its predecessor. This one, 400-pound marvel, was not just heftier, but smarter. Equipped with a host of scientific instruments and pressurized interiors to maintain a stable temperature, Venera 1 was an epitome of optimism and resilience. Launched on February 12, 1961, it embarked on its voyage with the promise of uncovering Venus's deepest secrets. Imagine the excitement when, right after the launch, Venera 1 started communicating, twice in quick succession. The scientists' hearts raced, hopes soared and expectations skyrocketed. Every five days it would send messages back home, shedding light on its journey. But space is a vast, unpredictable void. On the fifth day after launch, they expected another signal, but what followed was an eerie silence. The once promising probe started to fade away, leaving the scientists in a mix of suspense and despair. Days turned into weeks and the communication lines fell apart. By March 4th it was clear, Venera 1 had gone silent, its voice lost in the terrifying void of space. Diving into the vastness of space, our Russian comrades embarked on an audacious quest, setting their sights on unveiling the mysteries of our neighbouring planet Venus. The Venera 2, a successor to the Venera 1, was bestowed with a TV system and specialised scientific instruments. Designed as a flyby, its sole purpose was to capture and relay information back to Earth. But alas, as it approached Venus on February 27, 1966, staying a mere 24,000 kilometres away, it faced unforeseen complications. Like an actor struck by stage fright, Venera 2 succumbed to overheating, leaving us in the dark about whether it had completed its flyby or given up midway. With no data returned, the hunger to unlock Venus's secrets intensified. Enter the next set of probes, Venera 3, 4, 5 and 6. These metallic marvels, each weighing approximately 2,000 pounds, were loaded with state-of-the-art instruments. But the crowning jewel, 
a detachable pod known as a descent module, filled with devices that could measure, analyze, and relay atmospheric details of our hellish neighbor. Venera 3 had a grand vision to gently touch down on Venus's surface, brandishing the coat of arms of the USSR. But fate had other plans. Instead of a majestic landing, it collided with the planet on March 1, 1966, earning the unintentional honor of being the first spacecraft to crash on another celestial body. Despite the communication systems betraying the mission, the estimated impact site was a tantalizing hint at the probe's journey. Though Venera 1, 2 and 3 might not have achieved their intended objectives, they etched an indomitable spirit of exploration. Like brave scouts leading a battalion, they paved the way for future missions to uncover the enigmas of Venus. Venera 4 was an embodiment of resilience and innovation. Standing at a towering 3.5 meters, it carried a 383-kilogram lander probe, securely sheltering crucial instruments. Launched from Tiazeli Sputnik on June 12, 1967, this gallant probe began its descent towards the nightside Venusian atmosphere on October 18. The daring probe's journey was accompanied by its main bus, faithfully trailing behind. But space exploration is fraught with perils. The bus wasn't built to endure Venus's volatile entry. At an altitude of 52 kilometers, parachutes sprang to life, guiding the probe's descent. A mere five minutes later, the instruments buzzed to life, relaying 23 sets of readings over a tense 93-minute window. It painted a thrilling picture, an atmosphere thick with 90 to 95 percent carbon dioxide and the absence of a magnetic field or radiation belts. Atomic hydrogen lurked at 9,900 kilometers altitude. Initial beliefs painted a tale of the probe touching Venus's surface. Although Venera 4's time on the mission was limited to just over an hour and a half, it left an everlasting legacy. Every beep, every transmitted piece of data was a testament to the unyielding spirit of exploration, feeding our insatiable curiosity about the universe's terrifying yet exhilarating mysteries. Venturing yet again into this enigmatic planet, two twin probes, Venera 5 and Venera 6, embarked on a mission to unveil the mysteries of Venus. Built with an uncanny resemblance, these identical probes were stronger and more resilient than their predecessor, Venera 4. With a main bus weighing a colossal 1,130 kilograms, they held their most treasured cargo, the descent probes. These probes, constructed for the high decelerations of space, were equipped with smaller parachutes. This clever adjustment allowed them to dive faster, seeking the depths of Venus's atmosphere while still in action. Imagine a probe speeding through space, only to suddenly eject its top, revealing instruments ready to gauge the alien environment. The probes boasted an array of scientific tools, including a radio altimeter, thermometers, barometers, and even photoelectric sensors. Venera 5, the first of the twins, set off on January 5, 1969. After some stellar navigation, the probe was cast off from its bus, making its descent from a staggering 37,000 kilometers away from Venus. The tension heightened as its parachute burst open at 210 meters per second. Every 45 seconds, Venera 5 sent chilling readouts back to Earth, fighting against the scorching temperature and immense pressure of Venus for an agonizing 53 minutes. It detected a blinding light level and confirmed the hellish conditions Venera 4 had discovered. The atmosphere was so dense with carbon dioxide that any hope of Venus being an Earth-like haven was instantly crushed. Just days later, on January 10th, Venera 6 followed in its twins' footsteps. Though its journey mirrored Venera 5's in many ways, it faced its own set of horrors. Its photometer, designed to measure light, failed. But the probe did relay chilling atmospheric samples, giving a nightmarish glimpse into what Venus truly was. Together, these twins not only painted a haunting picture of Venus, but offered invaluable insights into the greenhouse effect. A phenomenon that, although fascinating, will be left for another tale. Then came Venera 7. On August 17, 1970, it rocketed into space. This probe aimed even higher to land on Venus and relay its eerie secrets. Before its descent, it chilled to a bone-curdling minus eight degrees Celsius. As it made its entry, its parachute sprung to life 60 kilometers from the surface. All seemed to go well until disaster struck. 
Merely six minutes in, the parachute tore, leaving Venera 7 plummeting in freefall for almost half an hour. Against all odds, the probe survived its crash landing. The signal weakened, surged momentarily, then nearly vanished. Later, scientists theorized the probe might have bounced, coming to rest sideways, its antenna misaligned from Earth. It looked like the end for Venera 7, but this probe wasn't done. It relayed one final terrifying secret. Venus's surface was blisteringly hot, with temperatures soaring to an unimaginable 475 degrees Celsius. Picture a brick pizza oven and you'd have an inkling of Venus's scalding heat. And if that wasn't daunting enough, its surface pressure was so intense it equaled the crushing depths of being 900 meters underwater. These brave probes unveiled a world unlike any other, a world both awe-inspiring and nightmarish. With the sacrifice of Venera 7 hanging on our heads, the Russians were more interested in what little bit of information they had received from a dying Venera 7. With an ambition to know more about Venue, Venera 8 embarked on a daring journey to Venus on March 27, 1972. For 117 days, it soared through space, making a crucial course adjustment on April 6. Imagine a spacecraft's interior chilled to a freezing minus 15 degrees Celsius before plunging into Venus's atmosphere. As Venera 8 entered, its speed dramatically dropped from a blistering 11 kilometers per second to a safer 250 meters per second using arrow braking, a heart pounding 67 kilometers above Venus. At 50 kilometers altitude, the probe woke its instruments. It began transmitting thrilling details of this alien world. The probe detected mysterious changes in light and slow, eerie winds of less than one kilometer per second when it was just 10 kilometers above the surface. It braved Venus's harsh surface, continuing to relay data for an astonishing 63 minutes before the brutal conditions silenced it. What did Venera 8 uncover? The probe echoed Venera 7's alarming findings, sizzling surface temperatures and suffocating pressures on Venus. Yet it also revealed something captivating. Venus's light was eerily similar to a cloudy day on Earth, hinting at potential for capturing Venusian landscapes in days to come. The probe even detected the menacing presence of sulfuric acid in the clouds and gave us our first glimpse of Venus's surface regolith. Despite its similarities with Venera 7, Venera 8 offered a fresh, terrifying look at Venus's deadly charm. But excitingly, this wasn't the end. Between 1975 and 1978, the Soviets sent a series of missions to Venus, namely Venera 9 to Venera 12. What made these missions stand out? Cameras. For the first time ever, we received images from Venus's surface. Even with technical glitches like lens caps not coming off, some probes did their job perfectly. Imagine opening a letter from an alien world and seeing its landscapes for the first time. That's how momentous these images were. Venera 9 and 10, in particular, sent back shots that still send shivers down our spine. Through their wide-angle lenses, these images painted Venus as a place of eerie beauty. Imagine a stark, rocky terrain stretching endlessly, reminiscent of a desolate alien realm from a sci-fi novel. The pictures even captured parts of the landers, showcasing their unique Soviet design flair. It's like catching a glimpse of a foreign flag on a distant, terrifying shore. Now let's get to the nitty-gritty. Venera 9 embarked on its daring journey on June 8, 1975. Fast forward to October 20th, and we're biting our nails as the descent craft separated from its orbiter. Two days later, it was touched down. To survive the infernal heat of Venus, the lander had a cool trick up its sleeve. It circulated a fluid that pre-cooled it to a chilly minus 60 degrees Celsius, ensuring the spacecraft's operation for a good 53 minutes post-landing. Talk about beating the heat. Venus wasn't going to be an easy conquest. The lander had to endure blazing descent heat, get slowed down by a series of parachutes, and finally make its mark with a landing cushion absorbing the shock. Yet not everything went according to plan. While it was meant to take a full panoramic shot, a stubborn cover meant only an 80-degree image was captured. Nevertheless, it was groundbreaking. Through Venera 9's eyes, Venus came alive in black and white. Its surface was a symphony of rocky patterns, possibly shaped by volcanic eruptions or tectonic shifts. If that wasn't gripping enough, there was no dust in the air, just shadows and rocks. 
some as big as 40 centimetres. Soon after, Venera 10 made its mark, reinforcing the story of this rocky alien wonder. Beneath their rocky revelations, both landers dug up some hard truths about Venus. The atmosphere was heavy with carbon dioxide, shrouded by thick, sinister sulfuric acid clouds. Venera 9 recorded scorching temperatures of 485 degrees Celsius with a pressure 90 times that of Earth's at sea level. Just thinking about it feels suffocating. Diving deep into Venus's mysteries, the Venera missions have been like a treasure hunt, each revelation more astonishing than the last. Venera 10 hinted at volcanic activity, but it was Venera 11 and 12, launched in September 1978, that took our curiosity to a whole new level. Without snapping pictures, they analysed Venus's surface, revealing elements like chlorine, bromine and perhaps even iodine. Imagine lightning and thunder roared on Venus, echoing Earth's tempests. But here's where things get spooky, the twilight phenomenon on Venus. This eerie occurrence manifests close to the planet's inferior conjunctions, casting curious visuals. The twilight phenomenon of Venus, often referred to as the evening star, or morning star, is a captivating celestial display. As the second planet from the sun, Venus is bright enough to be seen with the naked eye during twilight, just after sunset or just before sunrise. Its brilliance is attributed to its thick atmosphere, which effectively reflects sunlight. When observed during these twilight hours, Venus appears as a radiant point of light, unmistakably brighter than surrounding stars. Its prominence in our sky has captured human imagination for centuries, leading to numerous myths and stories across diverse cultures. The phenomenon offers a mesmerizing blend of astronomical wonder and cultural significance. Fast forward to Venera 13, a probe that snatched the limelight swiftly. Launched in 1981, it was an advanced marvel, equipped not only to snap color images, but also to tap into the very whispers of the Venusian wind. The images it sent back were a wonder to behold, wild, fiery landscapes that left scientists both amazed and bewildered. Venera 13 wasn't just about sights, but sounds as well. It bore into Venus's surface, unearthing clues to its geology. Yet the sounds it transmitted were both mesmerizing and chilling, loud whispers, as if Venus itself had secrets it wanted to share. And the heat, imagine stepping out into a scorching 855 degree F, 457 degree C. Truly, Venus is Earth's more untamed and fierce sibling. And there's more. Venera 13 hoped to capture the planet's seismic whispers to listen to its heartbeats, but alas, Venus stayed silent. Venera 14, however, following in its twin's footsteps, continued the journey, plunging deep and sending back stunning visuals. All of these efforts culminated in Venera 14. Venera 14, a high-tech probe, had a special ATM for digging and examining the soil. When it did, it unveiled secrets of the planet's volcanic history. Ready to photograph this alien world, it had to pop off a lens cap. Boom! Pyrotechnics did the job, but oh no! The lens cap landed exactly where the probe was to test the ground squeeze. A heart-stopping error? Instead, quick-thinking scientists turned this slip into a thrilling study. They saw how the lens cap acted with the strange surface below. Talk about a thrilling twist in space exploration. For ages, we believed Venus was unreachable due to its closeness to the Sun. However, with all this history behind Russia's space explorations, whispers about the Russian government hiding secrets are growing louder. The recent leak has ignited a wildfire of curiosity. What else might they be concealing? Some suggest they're communicating with extraterrestrials. Although unproven, the thought is chilling. Are they shielding us from truths about otherworldly beings? Imagine what revelations lie hidden. Could the stars hold answers we've been denied? But it isn't just the Russians and Venus exploration programs that have had people questioning governmental intentions. Whispers of hidden agendas behind space exploration abound, as do rumors that space agencies are withholding vital information. Ever heard of the dark side of the moon? Some conspiracy theorists believe that space agencies are keeping secrets about what's truly on the other side. They suggest that alien bases or ancient structures might be hidden there, with only one side of the moon ever visible from Earth, it's a perfect place for extraterrestrial secrets, right? And then there's Mars. Rovers have been exploring the red planet for years. 
but are they only showing us part of the story? Some claim to have seen mysterious structures in rover photos, structures that resemble pyramids or faces. Could ancient civilizations or even present-day aliens be calling Mars home? Perhaps the most chilling theory surrounds the Voyager missions. These spacecraft launched in the 1970s are still sending data back from the depths of interstellar space. Yet, a few believers speculate that some of this data, possibly messages from unknown cosmic entities, is being kept from the public. Why? Fear? Control? The potential ramifications are mind-boggling. Even astronauts aren't spared from conspiracy chatter. There have been claims that some astronauts have witnessed UFOs or encountered extraterrestrial beings during their missions. However, they were allegedly sworn to secrecy by the agencies they work for, preventing them from sharing their experiences with the world. Thank you for being with us. Make sure to watch the next video on your screen. It's fantastic.